Good morning. Good morning. Well, for the ones that are home watching, wondering what's going on, maybe they've already, how would that be? They've already been here and left? Or they're not, they won't be here for another hour. You sure? Okay, so if you're going to come an hour from now, you can have your own service. <laughs> but anyway, we're glad you're here this morning. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about. Mike's going to come on up and do some uh, announcements for us. But let's open in a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for the day you've given us, Father, for uh, spring being right around the corner. Father, for new light uh, coming out on all the trees and the grasses and the flowers, Father. And we just thank you, Lord, that you are the giver of new life. And that, Father, you can change us and mold us, Lord, into to what you want us to be. So, Father, we thank you that you've given us another day here at this church. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Mike. morning. Sun's shining nicely. Okay, today is the 14th. It's the second Sunday offering for the emergency fund. Remember to put those in the little envelopes and that way they know what they're going to. Wednesday, March the 17th at 7 p.m. is when Bob will do his uh, History of the Beaver Run Church, part of his research for class. We invite everyone to come out to, to see that. Monday, March the 22nd at 6 p.m., all board commissions will be meeting prior to the board meeting, which is at 6.30. And the board meetings for everyone come out, and uh, that's where we get all the information, and we sit down and talk informal and, and, and figure out what we're doing, and you may have the next best idea. Saturday, March the 27th, from 2 to 4, we're having the Easter egg hunt. How's that going, Rachel, with your list? Okay. Everybody hear that? Okay. And, um, Monday, March the 29th, 6 p.m., is the adult fellowship meeting. That's a, a great time. I, I never went to those until here recently, and, and we always have a fun time. So that's another one I would say to come out to. Okay, I got a couple uh, requests here early this morning. Carolyn Tutter, she's having heart issues and gallstones. Uh, keep continue to pray for her. And the gentleman that we was praying for at Morgantown that uh, was the organ donor that woke up on the thing, he has passed away. But um, we don't know the reason. If there was a reason that he woke up um, at that time. So just pray for that family and uh, continue to keep them in our thoughts and prayers. Any other announcements this morning or prayers or praises? or Go ahead. other prayers or praises? Somebody else got to see their grandkids. <laughs> Any other prayers, announcements, or praises? Go ahead, sir. Unspoken? Okay, if not, let's go to the Lord in prayers. I know Bob's got some stuff to do here this morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, hallowed be your name, Father of heaven and earth. 
we gather today as your faithful. You have kept us in your presence through the week. Today we come to glorify you and to thank you for all that you have done. And we pray for each one that's mentioned here today. Lord, the unspoken prayers, we just know that you know every one of them. We just pray that you be with each one and let them know that we're praying for them and thinking about them. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, our call to worship. Let's go now. I get you to start that, and we let everybody to say in that, please. Okay, at this time I'll turn it over to Bob because I know he's got some more announcements. Oh, thank you, Mike. You can go ahead and fill this. Um, I think we'll do a couple songs first and then we'll get to some more announcements. See what I got wrote down here. Yeah, do a couple of songs there, Thelma, if we can get those things going. And uh, just a closer walk with thee. I think you all know this one. So if y'all would stand, Thelma will get that up and we'll get that going. Just a closer walk. 
sure you all know the next one as well. Sweet by and by, you need to sing along with us. So. Okay, what you got? The game for me. He can't hear me. Hmm. You got to stop the video itself. Yeah. Turn it up. Stop. Should have been all the way up anyway. Let it go. Too hard. Like I say, he says he's got to come back, so I don't know. We do have gremlins over here. There's no doubt about it because we were here the other day and it was perfect. No turning back. Speaking of gremlins. Our cogs. I have gremlins. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Yeah, we got. The, hey, all right, Thelma. All right, go to the next one, please. There you go. I want to talk a little bit about our Easter egg hunt going on here, and to do that, we will let Rachel uh, talk about what we need to do here. So, hmm? You already talked about it? Okay. Well, we don't need to talk about it. Does anyone have any questions about this? Call Rachel. Call Rachel. 
There you go. What time are we going to be packing the bags? Okay, that's one thing. Number two, I want you to know that we have contacted the, turn this off, Phil. We contacted the people who installed the lift chair down here. No, I got a hold of the people who invented the lift chair down there. <laughs> I called him and he said, I don't know who put it in, but it wasn't us. He said, a third party must have put it in. And he said, uh, for us to come and, and uh, maintenance that thing, it's a $450 fee to show up just to show up and he said if, unless it's perfect and if it's perfect it's only $250 I said well let's do it this way I said you walk me through it let's go through it together so we went through all the codes and he said you need to clean the track every week I said well it's cleaned about once probably a year but we cleaned the track and went over it went through all the codes and that thing is working great right now so Anybody that needs to use the lift, it is working. We come over last week and got on, and they went up about halfway and stopped. Well, I didn't know it's electrical, but it has a battery in it. I don't understand why they did that, but you have to leave it on. You have to leave the key on. The key was off. That's all that was wrong. So anyway, the lift is working, so we got that. We ended up buying a new vacuum cleaner for the church and fixed the old one. So we'll leave one downstairs and one upstairs. I think the cleaning ladies will probably be very appreciative at that. And also want to remember Wednesday night for the uh, little thing I have to do for the history of the Beaver Run Church. That'll be Wednesday night at 7. Anybody who wants to come out, Roger Leatherman will be here. And he, he's the one who has to grade me and go over the, the school. So come out Wednesday night at 7 o'clock for that. So I asked my wife to come. She's going to do the offering today. Uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 7 says, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compassion or compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So give as the Lord has given unto you. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, we thank you that we can get together, Lord, and as an act of worship, come with our offerings and tithes. So Lord, I just thank you for the day you've given us, and uh, Lord, I just ask this to be used for the building of your kingdom. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll get you started back here. So just come as she sings and, and uh, do your offering, please. Precious Redeemer and friend Who would have thought that a lamb Could rescue the souls of men Oh, you rescue the souls of men Counselor Comforter, keeper, spirit we long to embrace. You offer hope when our hearts have hopelessly lost the way. Oh, we hopelessly lost the way. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace. Our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger. You are the one that we pray. 
faithfully loving your own. Here in our weakness you find us calling before your throne. Oh, we're falling before your throne. You you listen to the words of that song, when there's times and trials in your life that you just think's going to swallow you whole, this song just blesses my heart. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you so much. Lord, uh, Lord, I thank you that you're there, Lord, in the hard times, that we can come to you, as we talked about last week, the Abba Father, that we can come running to you when there's problems, when there's things going on in our life that we can't control, or things that we don't understand. We can come to the Abba Father, and we can come and, and talk to you like a father talks to a son. That intimate relationship, Father, is what we're after. Father, be with us. Lord, thank you for those that gave in the offering today, Father. Thank you that uh, the money can be used, Father, for the building of your kingdom. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So last week, if you remember, we were talking about Christians that have lost their balance. So I didn't get clear or finish, but we talked about that you can go either way in your walk with Christ. You can be either too conservative or you can be too liberal. You can be too religious. Uh, you can go off the deep end the other way too. And what you have right now in our country is people just went clear off the deep end on the left side. Uh, won't, won't mention religious or parties, you know, how it is. But if you're here this morning and you have trouble with Pepe Le Pew or Dr. Seuss or Peter Pan, you need to look in the mirror and realize you're the problem you got a problem. And the people say, this stuff just doesn't make any sense. Well, the reason it doesn't make any sense is because Satan is insane. And the people that are following the people that are following that are insane. Satan is out to destroy us. And he wants to see just how far he can get. And he'll do things just because he's crazy. And he knows time is short. And he wants to get as many of us to follow him as possible. Before I forget, Linda, Lisa, happy birthday. Yeah, look back there and saw you both. Both are birthdays today. We done sang to you last week. <laughs> but happy birthday. Make sure you take your wives out somewhere nice. For, you got it? You got it down? Yeah. Buddy's just going to get the grill out today, ain't you? Big old steaks. That farm up from you is not too far. Sheets for chili dog. I like sheets chili dog. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. I go there all the time. Hey, sheets is one of my favorite things. But anyway, last week we talked about meeting with the Abba Father. Got her warm in here today. 
the heat actually worked. Put the thing on timer. When I come in this morning, it was 70 degrees. Finally, after about a year, we got it. Yeah, now if we could just get the sound system to cooperate the same way, we would have it. The air conditioning, yeah, by the time we got the heat fix, it'll be time to get the air conditioning. So if the thing works as programmed, it should go off at noon. And so should I, but I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt it very much. But anyway, we talked about the Abba Father, and we talked about when you get off balance in your life, you need to have that time away with the Lord. You need to have that secret lonely place that Jesus uh, often went to. And so uh, if you don't have that spot, you need to find it. You need to go where you can meet the Father because when something bad happens in your life and there's nowhere else to turn, you've got to have the Abba Father. In other words, you need to go say, Daddy, help me. As you know, and Mike said a while ago, the guy we've been talking about out in Morgantown, his name is Mike. I've been calling him Mark, but his name is Mike. Can you imagine what that family has went through? Can you imagine getting the phone call and saying your dad and your husband have been shot? You're the innocent party in this. He was shot. And you need to get to the hospital fast. And they went to the hospital to, to see him, and he was fading fast. And finally it got to the point where he was brain dead. And so the doctor said, you need to come in and say your goodbyes before we turn off the life support. So they did. The pastor came in, the family came in, said their goodbyes. So they wheeled him to the operating room to take out his organs because he was an organ donor. And just as they were getting ready to remove the organs, he came to life and grabbed the nurse. Can you imagine getting that phone call? Saying, hey, he came to life. And they ran back to the hospital and he was alive. And he was even to the point he was sitting up in a chair last week. But because of him being brain dead so long, he couldn't get rid of the CO2 in his body. And his organs started to shut down again and finally here the other day he passed away so they got another phone call that he died again I don't know how you get through situations like like that without the Abba Father because there is only one person that can get you through something like that and that is the Abba Father Jesus doesn't always remove the circumstances. Remember when Jesus was in the garden, he prayed, Father, please, if it be possible, take this cup away from me. And God simply said, no, you must drink this cup. So when something bad happens in your life, go to the Abba, go to the Father, and say, I just don't get what you're doing, but I trust you. There's a reason that this stuff goes on. Maybe that guy passed away out there for a message like this somewhere. I don't know. There's a reason. And someday it will all make sense. So last week we got to the part of Matthew 7, 11. That's not on your, your screen yet. It says, if you then know you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? The Lord is not out to confuse you. The Lord is not out to hurt you. That's not the goal. There's a lot of people who think that the Lord's hand is against them. Well, if you're living in sin, perhaps. But there's reasons that we cannot comprehend why bad things happen to good people. Read the book of Job. Why? Because God could. It's that simple. One of the basic principles of the scripture is that we miss sometimes is that he died to have a relationship with us. And if bad things coming into your life is the only way the Lord can get your attention, then so be it. 
He'd rather not take that route. But the Lord wants to have an intimate relationship with you. When you're overwhelmed, David gives us an example of what to do when that feeling overtakes us. Being overwhelmed is just so common these days. Psalm 61, 1 through 4 says, Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth I will cry unto thee, and my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Selah. So when you're going through something bad that is unbearable, number one, pray. And then acknowledge you have a problem. Number two. And third, remember what he has done for you in the past and praise him for it. And four, remember God's promises to those who are faithful. God loves us. He's not desiring that we should suffer. That's not his goal. And next, stay humble, which is what we're going to get into today. Because we're going to get into religious righteousness today. Psalms 46, 1 through 2 says, God, our, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way. So make sure you know him. Make sure you know the Abba Father. Know down deep in your soul that you have a relationship with him and not just religion. Religion has ate my lunch more than any other sin of my life. Religion is the Christian's worst enemy. Religion will take you out. Religion pushes to keep doing better. Satan loves to push. Christ loves to lead. There's a huge difference. And if you're an only child like I am, or you're a very independent person like I am, it's very hard to let go of stuff. This this is hard to take my hands off of this. But I got to trust people to take stuff and get it out of my hands. Because I want this church to be a unity, a community of people where everyone here gets involved. And it's easy for me to get swollen up in pride and do things my way. And that's why when the secretary called the other day that I'm using to help do this stuff, I said, I'm going to give you her number and you can talk to her. Get me out of this. And when Thelma said she would take care of the slides, I said, or the music, I said, you want to take care of the slides too? Get me out of it. I want you all to step up in this church. Because the way my understanding is here in the past, you've had people that just had a group that took over. I don't want that here. This is your church. I'm just the lead shepherd. The great shepherd is Jesus Christ. And as I follow him, you follow me. And I'll follow you. And together, we'll walk all together as a bunch of sheep following the Lord Jesus Christ. But pride, conceit, when it comes to the spiritual definition of trying to do it on your own is religion. Religion is a man-made work for God. Trying to do it our own way with rules, regulations, works. Then finding out this the hard way, the harder you try, the worse it gets. Try on your own not to sin, and you'll walk right towards the sin. Try on your own to be good, and the worse you'll get. Try on your own to be a good husband, the worse husband you'll be. You can do nothing on your own. Try to follow the Old Testament law, the Ten Commandments. Well, guess what? They were put there for you to see what it takes 
to follow the Lord, they were put there to show you can't keep them. It's one of the main reasons they were written. You can't keep them. I want to get off on something here just for a second before I go to this scripture. Matthew 12, and we're going to be there shortly, talks about demon possession. Now, you don't hear a lot about that today. You can see a lot of it if you watch. The Bible tells us they are fallen angels cast out of heaven by God himself. For those who like to do it on their own, like me, there's a danger, a very serious danger spoken of in Matthew 12. Because a person who does it on their own has a hard time accepting Christ. I've said this here before, but Jesus times anything is zero. Riley, you're in school right now. What's 10 times zero? Zero. Let's try another one. What's 100 times zero? Zero. What's a million times zero? Zero. No matter what you add to Jesus, nullifies salvation. That's why he says the gate is so narrow. Wide is the way to destruction. I am the truth, the way, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except by me. So the moment you come up here and you make a profession of Christ, say, Lord, come into my heart. But I have to be baptized. Or I have to take communion. Or I have to put so much money in the offering plate nullifies salvation because it has to be Jesus Christ plus nothing times nothing or your salvation is void but in my mind I want to help him a little bit if I can just Lord I'll do this for you you'll like me a little bit better No, Lord can't love you any more than he loves you right now. His goal now that you've accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior is to get you to have a relationship with him. That's the whole thing in a nutshell. That's why the curtain was torn top to bottom. So you could walk into the Holy of Holies at any time you want to and say, Abba, Father, talk to me. But what we do is we wait until there's an issue, a problem, a circumstance that comes up in your life and then you go to him and you don't have that intimacy so he seems so far away because he's not really real to you and he'll meet you in them places but if we would just go to him on a normal weekly basis like Jesus did and get with the Abba Father go to your lonely place seek him on a regular basis basis. We talked about that a lot last week. If you're trying to get to heaven on your own, the chances of being saved are nil. Demons love religious people. I want you to know that. Just think back to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The thing these people have in common with Satan is pride. Pride is what got Satan cast out in the first place. Here it is. We're finally up to the scriptures. Isaiah 14, 12 through 15. How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, that's Satan, son of dawn. You have been cast down to earth, you who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will set enthroned on the mount of assembly on the utmost heights of Mount Zaphon. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. But you are brought down to the realm of the dead, to the depths of the pit. 
How many I wills was there there? Several. I. Without Christ, you can do nothing. Most sins that you encounter have a root in pride in some way, form, or another. I will be happy. I deserve to have a little happiness in my life. I will do it my own way. God says, no, there's only one way, my way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And that's what happens to religious people. We get into some kind of trouble and we cry out for God, cry out for help instead of calling on God and repenting of our sins. We try to stop sinning on our own. I'm still working on this one. Without repentance, there is no salvation. The Bible says you must repent, turn from your sin, turn the other way. You say, I'm not going to do that anymore. (laughs) Turn around, you do it again. You stop and you ask for help. You go to a pastor or someone, you get with counselors. You might turn to AA or join a group. Maybe you even start going to church. Your problem's still there. Because you've never really engaged God with your sin. He knows about it anyway. You can't hide it from him. Let's go to Matthew chapter 12. I want you to see this. Now this is talking about demon possession, but I want you to read it. When an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to the house I left. That house is you, your heart. When it arrives, it finds the house unoccupied, swept clean, and put in order. This is when you decide, hey, I'm going to quit sinning. I'm not going to do that anymore. Verse 45 said, Then he goes and takes with it seven other spirits, more wicked than itself, and they go in and they live there. And the final condition of that person is worse than the first. This is how it will be with this wicked generation. Have you ever been involved in a sin where it happened the first time and you were so convicted you couldn't stand it anymore? Broke your heart. And the next time you did it again, I'm like, what in the world? Every time you do it, it gets easier and easier. Now, this particular scripture is talking about demon possession. I personally don't believe a saved person can be demon possessed, but I do believe they can be demon oppressed. You can listen to the wrong voice. Now, this means a person can be affected by a demonic influence and they can even attack a Christian who is not walking with the Lord the way they should be and if you're not careful you'll go back into those religious practices rather than keeping our eyes on the Lord when you decide to stop sinning or in this case when an actual demon has invaded a person or place if you do not replace it with something godly, it most likely is going to come back. Now catch that. If you've got a sin in your life and you need to get rid of it and you've got it out of your life, if you don't put something in its place, there's an empty spot. And that sin's going to come back worse than it was before. And you've got to replace it with something. So what is a religious spirit? A religious spirit is a demon that wages war against the grace of God in our lives. An acceptance of Jesus' work as a true fulfillment of God's covenant between God and man. The Pharisees were the obvious examples of this. They had religious spirits. 
But many times those of us with religious spirits do not come close to their behavior. And me who has some religious spirits in me still, I must say, they are very destructive to your intimate relationship with God. If you want to have an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, you need to get rid of all religious spirits. Religion and relationship do not get along. And that's why religious spirits will work diligently to hinder true meaningful relationship between God and his children. Religious spirits can manifest itself in different ways for different people depending on Satan's plan for your life because Satan knows your weaknesses. And wherever you're weakest the most, that's where he's going to attack you. Example, one person might be plagued with feelings of never being good enough. While the next person might be inflicted with self-righteousness and false holiness and pride. When you cast out an evil religious spirit, you've got to replace it with a godly spirit. So, I made a list. Next one, please. There. All right. You'll have to move that a little bit. I need to go over here. What is this? Hold up. That's, you're good. Okay. It's just trying to catch up. Yeah, you just need to hit the little X up there in the corner. Uh, or whatever that thing is. The first one, yeah, I'm not going to say that. Happy. <laughs> You're right. There is a. Maybe you could just hit the escape button. There you go. Judgmentalism on the left side is a religious spirit. And you need to replace that with empathy. In other words, understanding I have the same problems. Shouldn't be judging people when you got the same problem. Jesus said, why in the world are you going to judge someone? Why don't you take the log out of your eye before you worry about the speck in someone else's eye? So you need to replace it. If you've got judgmentalism in your heart, you need to replace it. Self-righteousness. Replace it with Humility. Religious pride, replace that thing with modest humility. Criticism, we have a lot of people who are just critical of everything you do. You don't do that right, you don't do that, always tearing you down. Replace it with compassion. Legalism, that's mine right there. That's the moral law. Replace it with faith. Walk by faith, not by sight. Perfectionism. Got a little bit of that too. I know a lot of people's got that one. Everything's got to be just perfect. Replace it with flow. Things don't always go so perfect. This morning's a prime example of the stuff going along. Just accept it. It'll be all right. You see, my flesh wants to go over and just grab that thing from Thelma. Just do it. <laughs> just, I just want to dive. Practice will make perfect. I need to take my hands off of it. Division. There's people who want to divide you. People who just love to, to cause confusion and, and cut people off. Replace that thing with unity, peace, and harmony. Got error in your life, doctrinal falsehood, believe in the lie? Replace it with truth. What is the truth? Jesus Christ, the Bible. Unbelief. Well, I don't really believe the Lord's going to really do that. Well, you need to replace it with belief. Do you really believe the Lord loves you? Do you really believe he's going to judge your sin if you don't repent from it? Replace it with belief. Remember when Satan came to Adam and Eve in the garden? He said, he won't really judge. He won't, he won't really die. Well, they died. Doubt. 
Replace it with certainty, conviction, confidence, and trust. The next one, confusion. That's what we have going on in our world right now. It's just crazy, the confusion we got going right now. Replace it with the word. God is a God of order. He did everything in a certain way at a certain time. Look at creation itself. Did certain things on one day, certain things on the next day, certain, very orderly. I've been in churches that are very confusing. I've been some of these people that have these supposedly spirits where people's running around the room and they have music going on all the time, maybe smoke going up and all. Come on. God is a God of order. Argumentatism. Argumentatism. People that like to argue. I had a boss like this. He said, I just love to argue. And he'd come in in the morning at our safety meeting and just pick a fight. He said, I don't really disagree with you. I just want to argue. Really? Replace it with peace. False holiness, which is a tool for control. It's what it is. People who want to think that I'm so holy and better than you, thou, and all this stuff. Good grief. Replace it with holiness. Yeah, I should be set apart and pure. Salvation by works. I get this one once in a while, too. Salvation by faith. These are just some of the examples. Where are we at? Guilt. I've had this one. These are just ones that came to my mind because I got, all, I, I got most of these that needs worked on. Guilt. I look at my past life, I'm like, did I really do that? Did I really, really do that? Replace it with innocence and blameless because in Jesus Christ's eyes, you are perfect, made in his image, washed by the blood of the Lamb. And that guilt, you don't have to carry it anymore. First John says, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you for your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You got something going in your life that's not right, confess it, repent of it, and turn the other way, and it's forgiven, it's gone. Condemnation. Praise. We don't praise the Lord enough. We want to condemn this and condemn that and condemn other people. Replace that thing. Praise the Lord. Don't just praise him here on Sunday mornings with a couple songs we do. Praise him during the week. Thank him for the weather you got outside. Look outside. Look at his creation. Praise him for it. And that fear of losing salvation. I know people sit in a meeting one night with a lady. She said, what if I'm driving down the road and someone pulls out in front of me and I cuss them out and I get, and the car hits me and I die and go off into eternity. I go to heaven or hell. Well, if that's your view of salvation, you've missed it. You've missed it. Jesus Christ died for your sins, past tense, present tense, future tense. Okay? He knew what you were going to do before you did it 2,000 years ago, so you're forgiven. But yes, Jesus wants you to repent of your sins when it happens, confess it. That's based on a relationship with him. Walking with the Lord is what that's called. The fear of God, unhealthy, scared feeling. Yes, you should have a reverence for God. But perfect love cast out fear. You don't have to be afraid of your father. You don't have to be afraid of going and talking to him. He knows what you're going through anyway. And intolerance. We're just intolerant of people. Let me tell you what happened to my wife and I. Coming back from Florida. I'm really dry today. We were coming back from Florida and we stopped at a gas station to get gas and was there pumping the thing into the gas tank, the nozzle, and 
I heard this noise, this loud thum, 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 you know what I mean? Someone coming up one of those cars with the volume all the way up, and I'm like, all right, give me a break. I didn't think much of it. But I happened to look over, and it was a, a young man of color with his hat turned sideways, and he got out, and his pants were at his knees. Seriously. They were, they were sewed, they were sewed from here to his underwear, the bottom of his underwear. So when he walked, the pants were down here. I want to tell you something. The anger in me just, just, it, it, it was bad. Because I wanted to go over and take his hat on and go, what is wrong with you? That was what I wanted to do. I mean, I was mad. I didn't know him. Never talked to him. I don't know why he was dressed like that. But in my mind, I had him as one of these thugs that was going around for the last four years, burning stuff down, ripping down statues. I'd already judged him in my mind. Not until I left there and went up the road a few miles did it hit me. Hey, I died for him too. Christians have got to get out and start talking to these people because he could have been someone just trying to fit in with his group. I don't, I don't know the issues. So the wife and I talked and I said, we got to figure out an icebreaker to meet these people. So we discussed it between ourselves and we ordered us some tracks, some Bible tracks. The result of that's down there on the table right now. When I meet these people, I need to take a track and go up to them and say, hey, the Lord want me to give you this. Jesus loves you. Now what he does with it after that is between him and the Lord. But Christians were not out into the world. We have a totally messed up world right now because us in the churches are not going out into the world like we should giving people the gospel. These people are following another God, the God of this world, and that's why things are so messed up right now. That's why we have people that are out there to destroy you, to let anyone in. That's why we have people that want to take your guns, That's why we have people that want to kill your babies because they're searching and they're just begging for someone to say, please tell me about this Jesus and they don't even know it. And that's where we come in. And if you don't like where we are in the world right now, we need to look in the mirror. It's our fault. We've lost our relationship with the Lord. We've lost going out into the byways and the highways of heaven, of the earth, and inviting people to come to church, inviting people, telling them how to be saved. Now, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but how many people have you told about the Lord this week? If if your answer is zero, something's wrong. How can you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? No, you're going to heaven, and you're sitting here as a bunch of princes and prince and princesses, which is what you are, and not telling anyone about your father. Something's wrong with us. I'm including me in it too. You say, well, we got the coronavirus and I can't go visit people. You got a phone, don't you? Call people. Call people. Tell them about the Lord. How many of you have kids, grandkids, you're not sure if they know the Lord or not? Get out and tell them about Jesus. It's up to us, but you can only do it through a relationship with Jesus Christ and not this religion, religious nonsense like the Pharisees and the Sadducees had. People with religious spirits have a hard time to believe that salvation comes through the grace of God apart from the works of the law. They find it easy to judge others or criticize others over petty issues. And there's usually a sense of earning your status or good standing with God. 
So legalism is a popular bondage today where a person feels they have to adhere to a strict set of rules before they can be made right with God. People who never feel good enough for a relationship with God but are continually condemned or have a guilty feeling hovering over them all the time may have a religious spirit operating in their, in their heart. The feeling of never being good enough is a dead giveaway of a religious spirit. Because in order to make yourself good enough, you're usually putting someone else down. Telling them they're not living right, not doing right. I love the example of Jesus when they brought the woman to him caught in adultery. The Pharisees and the Sadducees were following the strictest laws. They said, we found her in the very act. And they wanted Jesus to take a rock and just stone her. Now I'm morbid. And I've seen a stoning. You can go on YouTube and you can watch one if you want to, if you're sick enough to watch one. What they would do, they would take the sand and they would just dig a hole. Put you down in it, cover you back up with sand so there was nothing exposed except from about here up. And then they would gather around her in a circle and just throw rocks at her head until she was dead. That's what they wanted. Now, they would have, if Jesus would have done that, the Pharisees and Sadducees would have applauded. But Jesus said, I forgive you. And he said, he, he of you that doesn't have a sin, cast the first stone. And it says, one by one, they started to walk away. And Jesus looked at her and he said, where's all of your accusers? And she said, there's none here. And he said, then neither do I accuse you. Then he said, go and sin no more. Let's don't forget that verse. I often wonder what Jesus was writing in the ground. Remember he took his finger and he was writing? Maybe he was writing, thou shalt not commit adultery. Maybe he was writing the law about someone's caught in adultery, they should be stoned to death. You want to live by the law? Get ready to be stoned to death. You want to live by grace and forgiveness? You follow Jesus Christ. Get a relationship with him. We'll stop there, pick it up next week. You got the uh, song on the, uh, for the invitation? I hope so, too. If you don't know him this morning, you don't have a relationship like you should have, I ask you to come. Just bow your head and say, Lord, I want a deeper relationship with you. I want to know you this morning like I should. Maybe you're not saved. You're not sure you're saved. You, know, you can settle that real quick. A lot of people go through life and they're not real, real sure. And there's a very, very simple prayer. You've already known what you need to do. And it goes something like this. Lord, if I'm not saved, save me now. That's simple. I have decided to follow Jesus.
Amen. I hope someone here has made a decision today to follow Jesus. I have decided. You don't want to do it the first time, you do it the second time. All you got to do is hit that little double thing. <sighs> okay. All right. All right. Say what? You're arguing. All right. Anyway, I want to thank you all for coming out today. Uh, if you've made a decision today to follow Christ or something, let's get together and talk about it. Because the Bible says you need to publicly profess your faith, okay? It's important. It nails that thing down. Because if you're in here and you've just prayed to yourself that little prayer, Lord, if I'm not saved, I'm not sure I'm saved, save me now. By the time you walk out to your car, you're going to have doubts again. So let's get that thing down. Now, I haven't talked about baptism here before because uh, we just haven't. But the time's coming again where we can do some baptisms we can find you a stream somewhere, which is where I prefer to do it. We can get you wet. I'll do it any way you want to do it. I'll even hold you down for an extra minute. <laughs> Don't mind. I'll get a couple big guys back here, and we'll, we'll hold you down. But uh, if you've never been baptized, let's, let's talk about that. Let's get that done. The benediction today says, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And so I just want to... Uh, Tell you all that I love you. I'm glad to be back. And I will see you Wednesday night. Uh, come out at 7 o'clock for that. And uh, thank you. Lord God, we thank you for another day you give us, Lord. Uh, we thank you that we can go from here, Lord, and be assured of our salvation. Lord, get the religious spirits out of us, Father, and build us a relationship with the Abba, Father. I just thank you, Lord, for that. As we go our way, Lord, just be with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.